have been able to get that new consultation process in place uh, with the bus operators. I think that actually makes us the only part of the country where private bus operators are actually going to engage in some form of consultation before they make any changes. So that's a big step in the right direction to sort of actually make sure that the passenger's voice is at the heart of decisions that are made on, on the network. Helen. Thank you. Um, I've got a question about your survey about bus use. Um, I didn't see any, any comments from people about um, factors like parking, finding a parking space or the cost of parking as being a factor in decision making about whether to use a bus or the car. Did you just not ask that? Or does it not really feature in, in people's decisions? I'd have to go back and, and kind of check the survey and, and exactly what, what we did and, and, and didn't ask. Just to, just to kind of set that survey into, into context, it isn't kind of the, the, the annual bus passenger survey overlooking a, a, a huge range of different factors. This is much more around, focused around essentially how much of an impact is the marketing and engagement campaign that we've, uh, that we've produced as part of the alliance. What are the, uh, what are the kind of bits of uh, uh, nuggets, if you like, of, um, of things around the uh, bus offer or around kind of what people are doing in terms of their travel patterns that we can kind of bring into that campaign and then how do we track awareness over time. So I think we're, we're aware of there's lots of different factors which, which kind of drive um, whether people are going to use the bus or not. How people are kind of marketed to and engaged with is one of those and the, the this survey is kind of really focused around that rather than some of those other factors. Gordon, then Francis, then Natalie, then Jerry. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, I think there's <coughs> a real problem with uh, looking at perception of bus, and I think a lot has to do with the, uh, the point that Councillor Fox made is that every time <coughs> you pick a newspaper up, it seems to be a route that's been ditched. I had the same thing as you know, it was the 135, just off you go. You know, it's a, it doesn't make it seem reliable. And I think the good stories are very hard here to, to throw across, because I thought that electric bus, bus was fantastic. I have to say, that was what, what you'd want to see in the future. And then, obviously, the point I made previously about the rain replacement being monitored, about how people feel about what the buses can offer as a way of picking them up. Certainly, another one that I think is demonstrating how forward thinking we can be is the absolutely essential one for the for the area of the, the apprentice discount card share. That is going to be a real big achievement in being delivered in the city region. But from the question of where future ones surveys would, would reveal things, I'm interested in the, I think I've got the term right here, you might correct me if I've just called it the wrong name, a demand-led service. So you, you pointed out to the point that um, you concentrate on day services because night time falls off a lot. Maybe there's something to tie in with, not, not the same as the Ariba click, but the same principle of people being able to, you know, call up enough demand for a, a, a bus service to be managed at a, uh, at a practical cost. I know that's probably something you're already thinking about, but it does seem to strike a bit of a, a code of imagination in how we could deliver things differently. I'll take each of those uh, in turn. The, the, the good news stories versus bad news stories is something that it's not only bus that has to contend with we, we see that that's just the nature of, of what gets reported. Generally, it's the, it's the more the bad stuff and, and less the good stuff. Avon's a really good example of that, where you could move the press stories around Avon going into administration and, and the impact, and, and rightly so. Uh, but it, although we've, we've put press releases out and pushed those around what's, uh, what's, what we're doing to replace that as, as emergency travel, been much, much less pickup of, uh, of that, and that's a really good demonstration, actually, that it's, that it's the bad news that, 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 that sells us. That's, that's the nature of things. 
I think there's another example, though, which is the, uh, the bus debate, which was launched on Friday, which I think actually was quite a good and balanced um, piece, of, uh, piece of communication. I think it wasn't overly kind of critical of bus, and it wasn't overly uh, kind of complimentary. I think it, it set a, a really good and balanced tone, I think, for, for that debate. In terms of rail replacement, I think that's something um, I'll, I'll take away and make sure uh, ask with Michelle about, about how we, we kind of pick that up in uh, mystery shopping and make sure we kind of learn from that. And I know um, this, there was quite a lot of information gathered from the loop line um, work that was done uh, last year where kind of jet rail passengers were transferred onto high quality rail replacement buses and were actually really impressed uh, by the offer. And in terms of demand responsive transport, um, that's a, it, it's a new thing um, in, the, in the transport industry in the UK and certainly for, for, for us in the region, we're one of the first to kind of have such a, a service, which, uh, which, which is great. I think it gives us the opportunity to kind of learn a lot from how that's rolled out. Um, I think the, kind of the point you make really though is, is about the potential to aggregate journeys and do that in an effective and efficient way. And I think that's certainly something that technology can be used to, to harness. I think that's exactly the sort of thing where you can kind of get efficiencies. I mean, ultimately, that's what a bus does. It aggregates a lot of journeys uh, together on a, on a set timetable. Demand responsive been able to do that more to kind of meet when people exactly want to, to travel and be potentially a lot more uh, more flexible. So I think we, I mean, we've been working very closely with Ariba on, on that. We tend to try and learn as many lessons uh, as we can, and we'd, we'd like to see that sort of thing rolled out more widely and, and learn, I guess, more lessons. Okay, Francis. Thank you. Uh, the CA has agreed that improving bus journeys uh, is one of the thematic priorities. Um, one of the routes is the 857 through Nosley. Um, this is, looks like a very positive scheme with a wide, wide range of benefits. When will it take place? What will, it, what will cost and how will it be funded? And what will the outcome be measured? Okay. In the, the report, I want, what I wanted to kind of show is the approach that we're taking uh, around this. So we're at very early stages. If you like, what, what we've done so far is agreed an approach and agreed some focus areas. So what I can't share with you because we haven't done that work yet is the detail about what that's going to look like. But what I've included in the report is the different factors that we're going to be considering. So we're going to be looking at, at the highway in partnership with uh, our districts to see what might be done. We're going to look at the facilities. We're going to look at the information. We're going to look at the junctions buses, the ticketing, we want to take into account the whole bus offer and how that links with walking and cycling and, and rail. So that's the approach that we've agreed to take. We now kind of start the working up the detail through the steering groups that we're, we're setting up. And what we're doing is trying to align that piece of work with the, as you, as you mentioned at the start of your question, the approach that the combined authorities taken around its thematic areas, particularly in terms of transport cities. I've got another question as well. Um, a, 12, a 12 week protocol for consulting customers on changing to bus services outside the network review has been developed and agreed, including a two week consultation period. How how was this applied to terminating the 139 service in August, please? Okay, so that protocol has been agreed and implemented since that change. So um, the, we've got actually got the first services uh, now in, well, in the last in the last kind of week or so, which are being consulted on. That that this is the first time that that process. Uh, has been applied. So it only started in well, last month, so uh, and it will now be a process that, that happens from now on. I've got another question, if you don't mind. Um, the Houghton have taken the 61A off. Um, can you tell me why? 
very simple terms. No, I can't. Uh, <laughs> but I can follow that up with you. Thank you. Okay. Um, right, Natalie. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Mark, for that report and the update. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a regular bus user and I've contacted you many times and love the concept best for my boss. But in terms of with the alliance, how are you and your team ensuring the reliability? Because many a time <coughs> I've had to resort to taxis to take my son to school because I was fearful I'll get a letter from the school the amount of times we got to school late. Um, and, you know, if you want people to have that trust uh, to make that shift, the service must be reliable. And within the last three weeks, what I've observed, uh, particularly on the Arriva buses, um, it's a bit dirty. And before that, it, you know, it was quite clean. And early morning, it's a bit smelly. And, you know, and th this might be feedback that you get from other bus users, but it puts people off from traveling on the bus. Um, so in terms of the alliance, how are you going to ensure w when you speak with the different bus providers that they focus on the customer's experience and ensuring they're on time, um, the bus is clean, that helps with the, pay, um, the customer's journey. Okay, I'll take second point first, that's okay. That's not something that I've, I've kind of heard, so I'll certainly make sure that I feed that back <coughs> to Arriva. I mean, one of the things that we've seen consistently over the recent years with the transport focus survey results is both an improvement in cleanliness on board and also a, a big difference between um, the city region schools and other areas. So if that's worsening now in, in your perceptions, then, then that's, a, that's a concern for us, particularly as we've got um, an enhanced cleaning regime that we've introduced as part of the alliance. So that's certainly something I'll, uh, I'll take away and I'll, I'll, I'll feed back to uh, Arriva. You made the point on punctuality and reliability. You make an absolutely crucial point when it comes to, uh, to to bus services, and there are two areas of responsibility when it comes to punctuality and reliability. One is the bus operators themselves, making sure they're firstly building in enough time into their timetables, making sure that operational efficiency is kind of is ingrained in their in their culture. But buses are run on roads that have lots of other users on and in many cases don't have the priority, don't have kind of segmentation.